Hello everybody and welcome to part 3 of the Open Orbis PS4 Toolchain tutorial series where we go through how to make PS4 homebrew apps uh, using the newly released Open Orbis Toolchain. So in the first video we set up the toolchain and then the second one we got down project creation and in this video we're going to be creating a little test application that's going to render 2D PNGs to the screen and then in the next video we're going to be continuing that sample and actually doing audio as well. And the purpose of doing this is to take you through some of the basics of using the PS4 system libraries, um, using those fake stubs that I was talking about in the first video. But on top of that, um, it will go through some gotchas that you may encounter on PS4 that you otherwise would not. So one of those is PS4 memory basics. There is some some weird like oddities with PS4 when it comes to memory, and we're going to be talking about that in this video. But then we're also going to be talking about how to use the SCE video out library and ultimately how to draw PNGs to the screen buffer. This is all going to be done through CPU rendering because it's just far easier than dealing with the GPU. In fact, the toolchain doesn't have proper GPU support yet. That's planned for the future. So everything in this is going to be done through the CPU. So let's just jump into uh, writing our application. Okay, so in the interest of time, I've decided to just open up the uh, PNG decode sample. I was originally going to like write it out and do a more full tutorial, but honestly that would probably take me like over half an hour. And um, I think it would be a little bit dry. But the reason I still wanna do this video is I wanna point out some, some interesting things here that are PS4 gotchas and uh, why we're doing what we're doing in this sample. So the graphics, uh, C++ and uh, H uh, header file, these are basically doing some of the under the hood stuff for uh, drawing to the 2D frame buffer. Most of it is pretty boring, honestly. It's just, you know, some math and drawing pixels, like, uh, provides a helper function for drawing pixels and rectangles and allocating the frame buffers. There's nothing super interesting there, but um, you can definitely check out that file. I'm not really going to be covering it in this video, though. Mainly, I'm going to be covering main here. And I'm going to be going through um, each line of code here, basically bit by bit, and explaining what it does. First of all, uh, the includes, we're gonna need stdio, obviously for like printf and stuff like that. String.h we use for memset and uh, some of those you know buffer related functions. Erno, uh, that way we can get errors. If things fail, we wanna know why. So this stuff is fairly benign. It's just the dimensions. We're gonna be using 90, uh, you know, we're gonna be doing 1080p. Uh, so first up is the draw PNG function. And this is a helper function that takes an image path and a set of starting coordinates, and it will draw, uh, it will first decode that image, and then it will draw that image to the screen based on those coordinates. So those coordinates are basically the top left of where the image starts drawing. That's the anchor point. We actually use a library here. We use the um, STB, uh, nothing's STB library. This library is really awesome because it's a header only library. Uh, it doesn't have any dependencies. It's freestanding. So um, I just found it really helpful and it handles all the decoding. And you can decode like multiple different images. You don't have to do PNGs. It, it supports multiple different types. So um, I'd recommend checking out that, uh, you know, little header library if you're interested in writing some, some homebrew apps and you don't want to deal with all of that yourself. And trust me, you probably don't. Um, so yeah, that header is there. Uh, we use that in this sample because it makes life far easier than it otherwise could be. And then um, basically what that function does, STBI load, is it will take the uh, the image path, the width, the height, the depth, and uh, the uh, mode, which we set to RGB alpha, and it will decode that image into a bitmap. And then we can just iterate that bitmap and draw the pixels to the screen buffer however we want, which is exactly what we do. So you can see we have the for loops right here, Y posts, X posts, and we're just drawing uh, row by row, column by column. That's basically what's happening here. So we're taking the color, we're decoding it, and then we're drawing that pixel to the screen. It's very simple. This is like your the most basic 2D drawing you can really do. Um, if we were doing GPU stuff, this would probably be a lot more complicated, but alas, we're not, we're doing CPU, so it's a little bit easy. Now that we've drawn to the screen, we no longer need the actual image bitmap, and that image bitmap is heap allocated. So at the bottom, we just uh, call the free function. He provides like a little wrapper. So you can just call that free function on the image and you're good to go. Okay, getting down into main. So 
Uh, this, this function does a lot, um, but it's mainly setting up handles. So for doing anything important on the PS4, you're going to need to use handles. And this is pretty much the case everywhere, actually. If you're going to want to draw to the screen, you need to open up a video handle. If you're going to be playing audio, you need to open up an audio handle, and so on and so on. Everything functions through handles, especially on Linux. So that's how it works on the PS4 as well. So the libraries actually provide functions to allow you to open uh, handles, and you can set various modes on them and stuff. We're not really interested in those. We basically open up a video out handle with the main user on the main bus, and then we just ignore the other parameters that are provided here. If you go to the declaration, you can see some of the headers here that we have in the tool chain. Now you'll notice quite a few of these functions do not have uh, full prototypes because you can guarantee these functions are not all you know zero parameters they definitely take parameters and this is where i was kind of saying earlier in the series we would uh, absolutely love some help in this area uh, because we basically have to reverse these so it, there's a lot of work into getting these prototypes so if there's something here that you need or come across and you reverse it uh, we'd love it if you could add it to the tool chain or if you just want to help and contribute out this is one area we could use help but the ones that we use our reverse right here and uh, the video out open here is the prototype generally with the prototypes we don't use names because um, we don't always know them it's a lot easier to reverse just the types because that's all you really need generally when you're compiling you just need the types and the width of what you're passing to be correct so in these headers we just have the types maybe at some point there will be names in here but for the most part it's just types okay so we opened up a video handle. Next, we have to create a queue for flip events. Now this is used primarily for optimization, I believe. So basically you flip between uh, buffers being like um, work on one buffer while another buffer is being shown. If that fails, you have to clean up your handles. Um, you could try to trust the process destructor to do it, but on the PS4, you don't really want to trust anything to anything because some of their destructors are really messed up and they do not clean up properly. And if you don't clean up handles sometimes, you could end up permanently tainting the state of the system. It's really annoying. So I'd recommend, if possible, always try to make sure you clean up handles before you return out or anything like that. So then we just set the dimensions. That just basically, you know, sets some stuff up in the graphics header we were looking at earlier. After that, we allocate direct memory for the frame buffers for the CPU to draw to the screen. Now, here's where I'm gonna get into one of the gotchas with the PS4. You may ask, why don't we just allocate the frame buffers in the heap? There's two answers for this. For one, the PS4 heap that is provided to user land is actually not that big. The system has, I think, eight gigs of RAM, and I think at least two of those are reserved for the kernel. So you're left with maybe six gigs, and that's probably not even because you still need RAM for the system process and stuff like that. Overall, you're probably left with four or five gigabytes of RAM for your games. Now, most of that is direct memory. That is not even um, heat memory. So you'll find that with the tool chain, the way we have it set up, I think you can use about 700 or 800 megabytes of heat memory. By default, um, you know, regular PS4 games, they can only use like up to 10 megs of heat memory. It is really restricted. So that's one reason your heap is kind of restricted on the PS4. The other reason is direct memory is going to be faster because it goes over DMA. So heat memory is going to be a tad bit slower. So generally when you're drawing to the screen, um, you're going to be doing that every second. You want it to be as fast as possible. So you can make sure you hit at least um, the 30 FPS because that is the system cap. So you want to be hitting, make sure you're hitting 30 FPS. So um, you want as fast as you can get basically and direct memory basically gives you as fast as you can get. So that's why we're using it. Uh, once again, if we fail to allocate memory, we just close the video handle. After that, we allocate frame buffers. Now this uses a function from graphics.c++. Basically, I made it so the frame, I, I made a little allocator on top of the direct memory and it's basically just a bump allocator. It's a very simple allocator. It's nothing complex. Um, if you want to look at it, you can, but it's really not that interesting. 
Then after doing some meta stuff like setting the frame buffer index and the flip rate, we just fill the frame buffer with a background color. And this is configurable. You can just configure it at the uh, at the top of main here. I have it set to black by default, um, but this is RGB, so you can set it to any background color you want if you wanted to change it. Now the image position, I set these right here. I set it so that it is dead center in the screen. So how I do that is I take the width, I divide it by two, and then I subtract half of the width of the image. And then I do the exact same thing for the height. Um, this is where, you know, depending on where you want to draw your image, you're going to be tweaking that. Then we get to the draw loop. So this loop is going to run infinitely. It's never going to break out. And basically all this draw loop does is it gets a frame ID by just flipping the current frame. And then it draws the PNG, which is found in app zero, to those image coordinates we specified earlier. It submits a flip and then it just waits uh, on that frame and then it'll swap the frames. Uh, and that's basically all it does. It's a very simple game loop. So this app zero slash logo, this is another PS4 ism, I guess uh, is a good way of putting it. So on the PS4, every game and application is going to be sandboxed. Uh, they have pretty strong sandboxing. So you're not gonna be able to access any processes outside of your application. You're not gonna be able to access any uh, anything on the file system outside of your application sandbox. Now, obviously, because we are jailbroken, we could um, break out of the sandbox, but generally for homebrew, you do not want to do that because you're gonna be relying on that sandbox pathing for a lot of your stuff. And that's actually what we're doing here. So slash app zero is going to be is basically going to be the prefix for your sandbox directory. So you do slash app zero logo.png. And then when we build our package, we're going to put logo.png in the package. And it's going to basically mount that into the sandbox when you launch the application. So we'll get into that a little bit later. And then it's just drawing it to the image coordinates. So there's nothing like super complex here. The two big things with PS4 stuff is uh, that I wanted to get into was the heat memory stuff where it's a bit limited and you generally want to use direct memory for anything important. Uh, and the other thing was the, the sandboxing stuff. Now, one other thing I will say that you're, you're probably not really going to encounter, but I will say it is it's kind of a neat factoid, I guess, with PS4 stuff, is you'll notice we never break out of this for loop, ever. There's no break condition. And that is what is expected of PS4 applications. If your main function returns, you're doing something wrong because um, the PS4 does not expect applications to return. It will complain. Uh, it'll show basically a black screen. And if you're looking at the kernel log, it will print out a massive crash saying uh, return from main with zero or return from main with non-zero or whatever. And um, that's because it doesn't respect it doesn't expect games to return anything. It expects them to keep running. So that is something you may notice and that is part of the reason we actually return up here not only do we not want to continue because we don't have any you know we don't have expected behavior beyond this point but it's also going to give us that big crash and that's going to tell us boom something's wrong we're not just looking at a black screen wondering what's happening if you're looking at the log you're going to see what's wrong and you're going to see that printf so it, it really helps for debugging there so that's all that's involved with drawing a 2D image to the screen. I know I didn't like write it out and go through everything. We are using the uh, the Nothing's STB library because it's just really useful and I would recommend uh, checking it out for your homebrew projects. Um, but I just wanted to kind of step through the sample here and show you why we're doing some of the things we're doing in here. And, uh, and yeah, so in the next video, we're going to be going through the audio sample and uh, we're going to kind of go through it's it's actually a little bit simpler than the png decoding one because we actually use the stb library again for that and uh we don't have to draw to a frame buffer obviously for audio so we're going to get into that in the next tutorial and then after that we're actually going to be packaging the application and running it now one other thing i did want to cover with this sample before we move on to the next video is you may recall in the second uh, part of this tutorial series. I mentioned the build script and how the only thing you really want to touch is when you want to use libraries. So in this sample, we actually do use the SCE video out library. So let's take a look at the build up at. You'll notice right at the top here, set libraries. We have libc and libkernel, which was there before. That's there from the templates. 
but there's also this addition right there, minus L or dash library SCE video out. So that's just an example of how you add libraries. It's like really simple, but I did want to highlight it just because I did talk about it earlier and it is going to be important because if you don't do this, if you don't link in, in the uh, library stubs, um, you are going to end up with errors on the linker stage and linker errors are really annoying um, and they might not be totally obvious as to what's actually happening. So just make sure whenever you use a library that you add that in there so you don't forget about it in the build script or if you're on Linux in the make file.